Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Shoreham Airshow pilot wants license reinstated. Icon A5 type certificated in primary category. ICE takes down Remos. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Shoreham Airshow pilot wants license reinstated. The aviator whose airshow accident led to 11 deaths at a 2015 airshow has applied to the UK Civil Aviation Authority in the hopes of getting his license reinstated. The incident left a bad taste in many a British mouth when Andrew Hill's Hawker Hunter jet crashed into a nearby highway during a failed loot maneuver. British media made quite a sensation of their overhyped coverage. The impact destroyed eight cars with 11 victims spread across the travelers and audience. Those injured tallied up to 16. Hill survived the crash without ejecting, allowing him to be charged with negligent manslaughter at a criminal trial in 2019. He defended himself, blaming it on G-Lock. Hill was cleared of those charges, though a 2022 inquest by a non-aviation agency found his performance at the Shoreham Air Show quite lacking. The coroner report said he had failed to plan out his maneuver by a significant margin, believing that it should have been obvious on its face that he was not in any position to make a loop so close to the ground, 200 feet above ground level compared to a minimum of 500 feet. And after the break, full-scale butterfly prototype completed and ready for testing. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in celebration, Trace Atkins for an opening day concert. A total war since I was a kid between Jesus and John. Don't miss Trace Atkins with special guest Sarah Evans. Ponytail girl grown up to be a woman, now she's gone and I'm blinking an eye. Get your tickets now and be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in. Go to flysnf.org. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Full-scale butterfly prototype completed and ready for testing. Overair has completed assembly of the first full-scale prototype of its butterfly EV tall aircraft. This follows the validation of their full-scale propulsion technology via a 2022 truck-based test. This achievement signals the start of Overair's vehicle-level testing phase at its Santa Ana, California headquarters before moving the aircraft to its flight test facility in Victorville, California. Initial tests scheduled to begin in early 2024 will focus on validating Butterfly's propulsion systems, flight control mechanics, safety features, and operational efficiency. Airbus delivers first aircraft from new Toulouse facility. Airbus has completed its first Airbus A321neo assembled at its newest A320 family final assembly line in Toulouse. The A321neo, which will be operated by Pegasus Airlines, the leading low-cost carrier in Turkey, is the first delivery from Airbus's latest state-of-the-art production facility. Located in the former A380 Jean-Luc Lagardère building, the assembly line reflects Airbus's attempt to meet demand for the A321neo, which now accounts for nearly 65% of Airbus's A320 family order backlog. FAA approves New Haven Airport expansion. Tweed New Haven Airport in Connecticut has been given the green light by the FAA's environmental assessment, finding no significant impact for the proposed runway and terminal expansion. 
The changes will provide more terminal space and a longer runway for 0220 at a proposed cost of $165 million. The potential environmental impacts are minimal, according to a 25-page study on the project. Tweed was identified as, quote, one of the most underserved airports in the country, end quote, according to an airport management master plan. Red Hawk readies for climate chamber testing. The Air Force's new bird of prey, the T-7 Red Hawk, arrived at Eglin Air Force Base December 15th to begin a series of climate testing at Eglin AFB's McKinley Climatic Lab. The purpose of the testing is to verify the T-7A system functionality while operating in extreme environmental conditions. Among others, those conditions consist of minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 110 degrees sustained temperatures. The climatic chamber testing will evaluate the aircraft system's performance, including propulsion, hydraulic, fuel, electrical, secondary power, environmental control, and overall operations. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Icon A5 type certificated in primary category. Overpriced, offering meager performance, and burdened with a history of disappointment have made it hard for those who inherited the ICON program to get ahead. The company has turned to a certification program that has been all but abandoned by others in the sport plane community. The FAA has granted type certification for the ICON A5 in the primary category. ICON was quick to crow about their achievement, highlighting their A5 as, quote, one of only a few light sport aircraft manufacturers in the world to meet the certification standards of the FAA, end quote. They hope to unlock further markets around the world, thanks to the reciprocity between TCs around the world. With an FAA primary type in hand, the A5 folks believe that they can now break into markets across Europe, Asia, Australia, and South America. Of course, the primary category is anything but a popular program, so the potential benefits are questionable. Jerry Meyer, CEO of Icon Aircraft, sees the change as a title shift for the A5, bringing it fresh enthusiasm abroad and at home. Quote, the Icon A5 offers an unparalleled blend of performance, safety, and versatility, and we are confident that it will captivate the imaginations of new customers and enthusiasts as we expand our sales and marketing presence outside of the U.S., end quote. And after these messages, ICE takes down Remos. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. ICE takes down Remos. ICE in Arizona. A recent incident put an exclamation mark under the importance of clearing aircraft device before flight, even when operating out of warm and sunny regions. The NTSB report makes note of a fateful chilly morning in Taylor, Arizona, when a Remos GX light sport plane took off with early morning frost attached to the windows and control surfaces. The plane took off and quickly came back down to the field in an inverted attitude, destroying the aircraft and seriously injuring the pilot in command. The local airport manager saw the Remos and said, quote, The airplane's windshield was partly covered with frost as it began to taxi in the parking ramp area, end quote. He thought that the pilot may have been taxiing into the sun to melt the frost that had covered the airplane. He further reported that it is quite common that the airplanes are moved on the ramp in the morning to melt the frost before a flight. The airport manager went inside to his office and shortly after received a call on the radio from an airplane flying over the airport that an airplane had crashed on the runway. The culprit was likely gleaned from a photo taken not too long after the crash, revealing that, quote, the upper surfaces of the horizontal stabilizers were covered in frost, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.